I'm Steve Gambio, the lead pastor at Life Church, and I'm so glad we have this time together. It is so important to stir up hope and life and empowerment and equip people to make a difference today. That's what we're all about here at Life Church. So as we listen to today's message, I really hope it impacts you and inspires you to make a difference in your world. few moments I want to talk to you about something that I believe is a emphasis that God has all of us to consider today and go away and do homework about and think a little deeper on and maybe if you'll think a little deeper on what I'm talking about your life can look a little bit more like God intended it to look and you can step outside of some of the areas where you're stuck and get unstuck maybe if you'll apply today's teaching instead of just let it fly by you or pass over you maybe if we'll actually say I'm gonna actually go away with something today that's gonna make me a better person maybe if you have that mindset in these few moments maybe there'll be something something that God can really help slot into place for you in your life, something that he can actually help you go away and look different in an area where you've looked the same for too long. We have been talking, Steve has been hinting at this word unlimited. And I'm very aware that for us to think of an unlimited God, an unlimited supply, an unlimited love, an unlimited power, unlimited blessings, it sounds good, but it seems to be so outside of our norm. We can say that we believe this. We can say that this is actually something that all of us are gonna embrace, that we're gonna believe in this unlimited God, but we live in a limited world. And we spend our life in very limited conversations. And we look at our limited paycheck and we look at the limits inside our own gifts and abilities and talents. The the fact is that these two things often clash with one another, that the unlimited nature, the unlimited love, the unlimited provision of God seems miles and miles away from the limitation that we actually feel and sense and deal with every single day. But just because those two things seem miles and miles apart from each other does not not mean that they cannot come together. And it does not mean that one is not true and the other one is our only hope and reality. The fact is that God does have unlimited resources. He does. It's not hype. It's not a lie. It's not what preachers whip you up by telling you. It's fact. It's true. If you believe this book and in this book are all of the things about his unlimited nature, then you can't throw one out with the other. God is unlimited. He is outside of time. His love has no end or depth that you can't get to the bottom of it. It is so deep and so wide. His grace and His mercies are new every morning. Our grace isn't new every morning, but His grace is new every morning. And so the unlimited nature of God is not in question. It's just our ability to wrap our mind around it. And that's all I'm after today that makes Maybe in one area of your life, you can take another step further into the unlimitedness of God. Just a step that would increase you in some way that before today you were shrunken down and you were bent over and you were boxed in because of a mindset that you could not fix. And so I want to talk about a principle today and I'm naming the message stretch or snap. (laughs) Stretch or snap. Or snap. Now, I don't know about you, whether you like to exercise, whether you don't like to exercise, whether you think it's from the devil and it's because of the fall that we have to exercise. I'd like to think that if she hadn't eaten that apple, everything would have been calorie free. I think she stuffed up in a big way. And so now we do have to unfortunately exercise. And uh, whether you're in denial about that fact or not, there is, there is that part of our life that we have to choose to embrace if we want to live well and healthy and strong. And a friend of mine recently was blessed, I put in inverted commas because when I tell you what it is, you'll wonder whether it was a blessing. A friend of mine who I went to be with and spend a little time helping on some areas, I was with her and she explained to me, you know, in a couple of weeks, Charlotte, I am running the New York Marathon. And I said, you're doing what? She's like, I know. I don't want to, but I am running the New York Marathon. I said, Caroline, 
That, that's like something you have to like put a request in years in advance to even get in the New York Marathon. She goes, I know. She goes, a friend bought me it for a gift. Okay, if you're thinking of buying me a gift, don't get me a ticket, a place to run in the New York Marathon. I'm like, this friend does not know you very well, Caroline. And she's like, I know, but I have to run it. I'm like, no, you don't have. She's like, no, they're a really big donor to the Dream Center, which is what she runs. And so she's like, I have to run it. It would be rude not to run it. We're sat having this conversation while we're eating chocolate dessert. And I'm like, when is it? She's like, next, next weekend. I'm like, do you think we should lay off the dessert then? Because next weekend you are running a marathon. I said, have you got your shoes? She's like, no, I think you're supposed to have bought them by now to break them in. I'm like, everything about this conversation is wrong. She was no way ready for the stretch that that was going to put on her body. And I, as a friend, am saying to her, something's going to snap. She was not prepared for what was ahead. Now, if you talk to anyone that would educate you about how to prepare, they would say, if you don't learn how to add more flexibility to your body, when you actually try and put the pressure on your body, there is going to be something happen and it is not going to be nice. It is going to be a pain that you have chosen to inflict on yourself because you are going to try and stretch in an area where you have not warmed up the muscles. You're going to try and reach and stretch in an area where you are physically not able yet to stretch. And if you stretch in an area that you are not ready to stretch into, there will be a snap. Something is going to snap. There's going to be a snapped tendon. There's going to be a snapped ligament. There's going to be a tearing of a muscle. There's going to be damage that happens because if you don't stretch, you will snap. And I'm here to tell you today, it's exactly the same in the spiritual. If you don't stretch, you will snap. And so my question for all of you today, and I'm asking you to answer it honestly, and I have this week as I've been in the Word, is where are you snappy? Hello. Pharrell Williams wrote a song. I am rewriting the song because I'm snappy. Snappy, 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 snappy. Where are you snappy? Because some of you are snappy in certain areas of your life. And I'm here to let you know that you don't have to go through life snappy. That actually your snap is a sign that you are not stretching. If there's a snap in your marriage, if there's a snap in your temper, if there's a snap in your patience, if there's a snap in your grace, if there's a snap in your unforgiveness, you are snappy. Hello. Everybody should be looking straight ahead and not at your wife or your husband or your teenagers. But you know it. There's an area where for you, you always snap. Every time. It's a person and they just make you snap. It's a comment that makes your mind go down a certain worry and you just, you're already angry. You're already inside of yourself frustrated. There's a place in your marriage that if you go there, you know you'll snap. There's something with one of your kids where if it comes to mind, you're gonna snap. There's an environment that when you're in it, it just makes you snap. It's the bill that you look at that you know you can't pay and it just makes you snap. You snap either in a temper or in fear or in panic or dispeace kicks in or anger or, 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 or this sense of like, you know, losing the plot, losing perspective. There's a snapping that kicks in and some people snap a lot and others have certain places in which they always snap. And I want you to know that if there is a snapping point, it is a signal and a sign to your spirit that that needs to become your new stretching point. It's letting you know, I think I need to stretch more here, so I snap less here. I think I could focus my time and my energy on many things, but maybe 
one of the things that you should commit to give your time and energy to is less snapping in your life. Because the more you snap, the less peace you have, the less tranquility of mind you have, the less wisdom you can gain because you're too busy in overreaction mode to plan anything of significance or anything of purpose. So where is your snapping point? Write it down. And if you can't write it down, give the pen to your wife. She'll write it down for you. Snap. Snap. I'm just snappy. It's just how I am. Snapping means that in that area, if you were to snap a tendon, the results of that snapping would be severe. It would cause you to have an inability to move. If you snap a tendon, it would cause you pain. If you snap something, a muscle, a tendon in your body, it will cause a sense of incapacity. It will also even cause, at a, at a worst case scenario, deformity. And in the spirit, it's exactly the same. In the area where you snap, there will be pain. And in the area where you snap, there will be immobility. You won't be able to move forward. You won't be able to get past it. In the area where you snap, there can be a deformity in your thinking and in your love and in your grace and in your peace. The area where you snap will incapacitate you from parts of the future that God in his unlimited nature has for you. God does not snap. He is unlimited. But we have to stretch in order to meet the unlimited nature of God. So I want to look for a moment at a few areas where I think many of us snap, if we're honest. I wanna consider maybe three areas, if we have time, where snapping often happens and give you some insight to help you in your snap. And you know, if we don't get all three done, maybe one will be enough. And if in the first one I don't get you, I'll get you in the second, and then maybe I'll get you in the third. But the truth is, I'll probably get you in all three. Because I think these three areas that I'm talking about this morning are the three areas that we all, all struggle to stretch enough in and therefore all at times feel a snap in. You know, Isaiah 54, the famous verse about enlargement, has the word in there, stretch your tent curtains wide. It doesn't say go to someone else and ask them to stretch it for you. He says, you must stretch your life. There's a stretch that God is asking from all of our lives, not so that we do more, but so we can be more. Not so that we can achieve more, but so we can love more. Not so we can be better, but so we can be even more like Him and look like Him. This is not about achievement. It's about an attainment of something that changes your life. The unlimited nature of God is ours to grasp a hold of and pull from. And so the first area I want you to consider is what I'm calling the emotional snap. Turn to someone next to you and say, the emotional snap. <laughs> Snappy emotions. You all know what they look like. We all know what they sound like. The emotional snap. The person that is very easily offended, tense, uncomfortable, short, curt, frustrated. The emotional snap is when you have found a, a, an end point to what God says does not have to have an end point where your love just always runs out, where your grace always stops, where your peace is all out. Emotional snaps happen in relationships more than anywhere else. They will be the place where it intensifies, where you have to deal with it, where you have to see it. And some of you are sat here this morning like butter would not melt in your mouth. But I know if we were to put a secret camera on you and take it home with you, we would be shocked at what we would see because Mr. Happy is Mr. Snappy. And Mrs. Peaceful is Mrs. Painful in certain places because our snap, we manage to keep it from most people. But those that we are around more, do life with more, they see the snap and more than that, they feel the snap. If the unlimited nature of God tells us of his unlimited supply, 
then we need to understand there's a stretch all of us must go on to find the unlimited supply that God has for us. Philippians 4, 7, there is a peace that passes understanding. So if your peace is snapping, guess what? There's a stretch you have to go on. What does that peace look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? I'm not sure, but I know that there's an unlimited peace that passes understanding and therefore my peace doesn't need to snap. 1 Peter 1 verse 8, there is a joy unspeakable that fills every part. Hello. So why in my mood do I never laugh? Do I never experience joy? Which is why I'm weak because I have no strength. Because every time I get to that point where there should be joy, I snap because something in me can't stretch into the joy. You're the one that can't celebrate anyone else's win. You're the one that when someone else gets a breakthrough, you get bitter instead of happy for them. There's a snap inside of you, but the Bible tells us. There's a joy unspeakable, so there must be a stretch that you can make. It says in 1 Corinthians 13 that this love that we're supposed to have, this love, it doesn't judge, it It's not short-tempered. This love, it doesn't boast. This love, it isn't proud. This love is selfless. This love lays down its life. This love that 1 Corinthians speaks of is a stretch for all of us that in our love snap when things don't look like we want them to look like. It says in Colossians 1 verse 11, there is patience in long-suffering. Hello. In other words, your patience doesn't have to snap when your kids don't obey you the first time. Hello. Hello. Your patience doesn't have to snap when you don't get what you want when you want it. There is a stretch that we have to go on to find the patience that is good in long suffering. It says in Galatians 6 verse 9, don't grow weary in doing good because the harvest is coming. In other words, don't snap, just stretch. So where is your emotional snap? What area is that for you? And I suggest in that area, you begin to look at how you can stretch more into the goodness and grace of God. The disciples in Matthew 18 verse 21 began to look to Jesus to find out when was their snapping point allowed? I mean, Jesus, I know you're Jesus and all that, but like we clearly were not you. And so give us a break. Like when's our snapping point? Like when, when do we not have to be kind? And when do we not have to forgive? And when do we not have to say the nice thing that you always say? I mean, Jesus, cut us some slack. Tell us when we can snap. So it says at that point, Peter got up the nerve to ask, Master, how many times do I forgive a brother or sister who hurts me? Uh, this is his stretch. Seven? I mean, Jesus, that's a big stretch. That's, that's me going really far before I snap and can't forgive anymore. And Jesus replied, seven, hardly, try 70 times seven. In other words, if you're gonna be a follower of me, there's a lot more stretch you're gonna have to find. And Jesus was not saying after 70 times seven, you don't have to forgive anymore. He knew by choosing that number, by the time he got to 70 times seven, you'd have no energy left to not forgive anymore. He's like, you'll get it, maybe by that number you will get it. But what about people that hurt me? Yeah, they're gonna either make you snap or stretch. And you know what they would love? For you to snap. So instead, stretch. Be better, do better, give better, forgive quicker, love deeper, stretch. Stretch. Don't give in to the emotional snap that others are expecting or wanting from your life. Luke 6 verse 27. I mean, that messes us all up because in that verse, all of us find that when we feel like we should be able to snap, we now are being told, no, 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 you have to stretch. And in Luke 6 verse 27, Jesus says this, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Hello. Some of us snap at loving our family. But this is way beyond that. This is love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Hello. If someone slaps you on the cheek, turn to them. The other also. If someone takes your coat, 
Do not withhold your shirt from them. I mean, Jesus, what are you doing? What Jesus is doing is saying, I'm stretching you because I don't want snappy disciples. I'm stretching you so that you can be useful way beyond your emotional snapping point. Do to others as you would have do back to them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full, but love your enemies, do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Wow, Jesus, you're expecting me to stretch way beyond where most people snap. Where's your emotional snap? Add a spiritual stretch. Study, how do you stretch? Well, I guess stretching for me can come in three simple ways. And if I'm to think about how I stretch in the natural, I think we can add a stretch in the spiritual. Some good routine morning stretches for you go like this, stretch down on your knees. Stretch down into the Word of God. Stretch down into who He is. Stretch down with your face to the ground saying, God, I cannot do this without you. If I don't stretch down today, I'm not gonna be able to control my snap. I'm stretching down into your love. I'm stretching down into who you are. I'm stretching down into your word. I'm stretching down into you. You stretch down in the morning. Add this to your morning routine. And then I stretch up. I stretch up to you with my thanksgiving. I stretch up to you with my worship. I stretch up to you with all my weakness and deficiency. I stretch up to you and get a perspective of you that changes everything. And when I've stretched down and when I've stretched up, I'm ready to stretch out and touch people and bless people and be kind to people. Stretch down, stretch up, stretch out. Every one of you can have a morning routine of stretching down, stretching up, and then stretching out. And you will find it will begin to lessen the snap and increase your reach as a believer. I have three minutes left and two more points. Why does that always happen to me? Curse that clock. (laughs) Number two, the mind stretch. Some of you have a mind snap that goes on. You can't think outside of your current pressures. You can't see and think outside of the current lack that you find yourself in. You have a mind snap. When we talk about the fullness of God, your mind snaps because you can't even understand what that looks like. And so therefore you have to go on a stretch. You can't say, well, God, I I wanna believe that you're unlimited in your healing, but I've never stretched to discover that about you. I've never read about how you're a healer. I've never never studied about how you're a healer. I've never began to pray prayers that expand my faith to you as a healer. I'm saying it, but I'm not living it. Well, then there'll be a snap. When we say reach to him, like I did a minute ago for your healing, you'll snap at that point. She's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And all I mean is let go of this and enter this. God, it makes no sense. But actually, somehow it makes perfect sense. God, it makes no sense that you could provide for me, but God, your word says it, so I choose to not let my mind snap. I choose to let my mind stretch into who you are. Jesus one time was with the disciples. In John 6 verse five, he's looking at a crowd and a sea of need and it's the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. But it's interesting to me. It says this in verse five, when Jesus looked out and saw that a large crowd had arrived, he said to Philip, where can we buy bread to feed these people? Look at the next line. And he said this, why? To stretch Philip's faith because he already knew what he was gonna do. It's like Jesus knew, Philip, there's gonna be a mind snap here. You're gonna look at the crowd and you're gonna look at the resource and you're gonna say, it can't happen. But I need to stretch your understanding of who I am 
Because with me, all kinds of possibilities now open up. Philip, in your finite mind, there's a snap that you don't think that this can change, but you've forgotten who you're talking to. Everything can change. And your mind, when it snaps, it shuts down possibilities. It shuts down God providing, God healing, God sending, God rescuing. It all becomes about what you can do and what you can achieve and you mentally can't get past it. And so you have to go down. I'm gonna study who you are. You're the God of the impossible. You spin planets off your fingers. You raise the dead. You put coins in the mouth of fish. I'm going down into who you are. I'm reaching up and I'm gonna sing songs about the majesty of God. I'm gonna understand the unlimited nature of God. I'm gonna magnify the glory of God and I'm gonna reach out. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give and I'm gonna sow and I'm gonna bless because those actions are actions that my snapping wants to stop, but my unlimited believing wants to stretch. And so I'm not gonna withhold, I'm gonna do the opposite because that's the stretch for me. See, some of you are living like this. Like this is your faith. This is, there's only so far this will go and it'll snap. There's only so much this will hold and it will snap. Some of you emotionally, mentally, this is your life. It has some flexibility, but <laughs> this is God's idea. There is so much stretch in God. You have no idea how much He has for you, but you've got to stretch. Why are you living like this? God's not this, you're this. So you have to realize that all this is inside your life. Just needs accessing, just needs believing, just needs pulling on. All of this is inside your life. God has so much stretch for you. So stop snapping. Emotionally stop snapping. In your mind, mentally, stop snapping. Finally, some of you have stopped dreaming and asking and believing. There's a vision snap. You don't ask for anything anymore. You don't believe for anything anymore. You don't pray crazy prayers because you're like, what's the point? That's just not even sensible. Exactly, it's not sensible. You're not supposed to be sensible. You're supposed to be aware of the God of the impossible. And some of you have allowed your sensible to replace miracle. Let me read the scripture to you as we close. Because if ever you needed to know about how to stretch instead of snap, it's in Ephesians 3, 8 from the message verbal. It says this, this is my life work, helping people understand and respond to this message. It came as a sheer gift to me, a real surprise that God is handling all the details. When it came to presenting the message to people who had no background in God's way, I was the least qualified. I was the one that should have snapped of any of the available Christians, but God saw to it that I was equipped. But you can be sure that it had nothing to do with my natural abilities because they snap. And so here I am preaching and writing about things that are way over my head. The inexhaustible riches and generosity of Christ. My task is to bring out in the open and make plain what God who created all this in the first place has been doing in secret and behind the scenes all along through followers of Jesus like yourselves gathered in churches. This extraordinary plan of God is becoming known and talked about even among the angels. All this is proceeding along the lines planned all along by God and then executed in Christ Jesus. When we trust in Him, we're free to say whatever needs to be said, bold to go wherever we need to go. So don't let my present trouble get you down. Be proud. My response is to get down on my knees before the Father, this magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. And I ask Him to strengthen you by His Spirit, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite Him in. And I ask Him with, with both feet planted firmly on love that you'll be able to take in all the followers of
of Jesus, the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love, reach out and experience the breath, test its length, plumb its depth, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. God can do anything you know, far more than you could ever ask or even imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it by pushing, He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, His Spirit deeply and gently within us. So glory to God in the church and glory to God in the Messiah in Jesus and glory down all the generations and glory through all millennia. Oh yes, that's the God we serve. Hey, that's all we have time for now. And as we draw our time together to a close, our prayer and our confidence rests in God, that God is with you. So as you move forward into your week and month ahead, we know that you're gonna go on to make a greater difference in your world. moments, these unseen, uncelebrated, silent moments, ground is taken, battles are won, life is formed. Through the seemingly insignificant times, what you stand on is discovered, who you are is developed, and what you believe is shaped. Men, fathers, friends, husbands are made. In the shadows, backstage, before the sunrise, in your soul, this is where you win. Hope is found in these moments. Meaning is made in the stand. Stand and fight the good fight of the faith.